Hey guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing fantastic and that your Christmas went well. Now is our first video after Christmas, and yet again, it's still a Christmas gift. If you're not keeping up to date, you might not know that Questcraft just released a new build during Christmas Day, which was kind of like their Christmas gift to the community. So yes, Minecraft standalone for the quest is back, and it's better than ever. There have been a few substantial changes, and all the bugs stopping the game from launching at the very beginning have now been fixed. Now, now instead of running with Minecraft XR, they are running using Vivecraft, which is a pretty substantial change. So uh, yeah, with that being said, I'm Mystical, the install is now easier than ever, let me show you guys how to do it, and then we'll jump into the game and check it out. So first things first, you will still need developer mode enabled on your quest, because you will still need to somehow install an external APK onto the device. However, after you've done this, you never need to touch it again. And if you have a file explorer or side quest already installed on your device, you don't need a PC or a phone to ever do this to begin with. With. In case you don't have SideQuest or a File Explorer installed on your Quest, you will require a computer or a phone or some means or method to get the APK installed onto the Quest. So let's begin with that. In case you don't have a File Explorer or a SideQuest installed on your Quest, grab yourself a PC or a phone. On your PC, launch SideQuest, connect your Quest to your PC, accept any dialogues that might appear, search for Questcraft, and hit install. It's really all that simple. There's not much more to it. On your phone, it's a little bit different. You can get the SideQuest app from the Play Store. This can only be done on Android, unfortunately, no iPhones. You're going to require a Type-C to Type-C cable, connect your Quest to your phone using that Type-C to Type-C cable, or using an OTG adapter in case you have a micro USB phone. Accept any dialogues that might show up in the Quest if this is your first time connecting the two devices together. Make sure that SideQuest recognizes your device. And once you know that it does, you can search up Questcraft inside SideQuest on your phone. Hit install, let the app install, and you're pretty much ready to go. It really doesn't get much easier than this. There's no more finding APKs on GitHub or anything like that. It's all available right there on SideQuest. In case you do want the APK, they do provide it though. So if you for some reason prefer using ADB commands or something like that to install the APK, you can do that as well. Or I guess you can download the APK onto the Quest and then use a file manager to install it that way that also does work. There's multiple different methods you can install it with, but the easiest one is definitely to just have SideQuest installed on your Quest itself, and you can install it from there by just firing up SideQuest, searching for Questcraft, and installing the app. That's it. There's really not much more to it, so let's hop into it. To hop into the game, you're going to want to fire up your main Quest apps menu, head over to Unknown Sources up in the top right, and select Questcraft. That's it. You're hopping into the game. You will need to sign in with a Minecraft Java account since this isn't Bedrock. However, I have recently been told that if you have Bedrock, you also have Java since they've been unified or something like that. But I think it also only works if you have Bedrock on PC. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong down below, but you will need a Java account to sign in anyway. And Java accounts are now Microsoft accounts, so you will need a Microsoft account with a Java account to sign in. Once you've signed in, you hit play. It might take a little while, sometimes it hangs here and there, but as long as you can click play, you should be ready to go. So now let's hop into the game and see what it's really about. So first things first, this is very new. This is the new loading screen where you have to sign in using your Microsoft Java account, but this is very new. I don't remember anything like this being here. It's now like made with Unity and it's like a proper launcher. It all looks really, really cool. Okay, cool. So this is gonna make my life a lot easier because that means I can use my PC to sign in instead of having to type everything out here. So that's awesome. Okay, so now I should be able to compress Microsoft login. Yes, okay, cool. So this is how simple it is. You've got your mod manager here. The launcher looks completely different. Like it's really simple to use and you can just switch between the playable versions there. We're gonna use the latest version. We're gonna press play. And that is super, super simple. Like they have simplified everything. You don't need to add any weird accounts. You don't need to change any, anything like that. It's all super, super easy. I need a coffee. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's a problem. So this is the part where it hangs for a bit. This is perfectly normal. Just need to give it a while. And here we go, Mojang Studios. It always will hang for a little bit on those three dots, but I am so, so impressed with how far this has come. Main menu here, well, let's just jump into single player, create a new world, and yeah. It will lag in the main menu, always, just just a little bit, so that's perfectly normal. Uh, we're gonna go survival, yes. This all seems pretty standard to me, I'm not even gonna bother calling it. Also, with this, you can play multiplayer. You can play multiplayer with uh, 
with Questcraft. The issue is be careful which servers you choose because some servers don't actually allow you to play in VR and you don't want to get banned, you know? So you need to be very careful which servers you choose. But apart from that, it completely supports playing on uh, multiplayer, which is awesome. Because of course, sure, it's a normal Minecraft Java account. So, you know, I'm really excited to see the interface on this one because it is Vivecraft and Vivecraft is what I was always used to. It's generating worlds always takes super, super long. So just be patient. Like right now, I'm standing in a glitched area waiting for the world to generate. There's no kind of like loading screen or anything like that. You just kind of need to sit and wait. Um, so that's what we're going to do. But yeah, yeah, here we are. We just need to wait for everything to load in. So now that we have the mic back, let's create ourselves a crafting bench. Which again, I actually know how to use this. Oh yes, we have this back. So we can now choose stuff like this and like this. And of course, controls are interchangeable as well, which is fantastic. But yeah, this is now like super, super intuitive. Auto jump will need to be disabled. That is something that I absolutely despise. <laughs> and now we jump into the crafting bench. There we go. Oh, haptics are here. I just felt a vibration when I broke that block. Okay, honestly, I'm done with exercise for today. <laughs> Uh, there, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening right now. As you can see, everything has completely changed. The layout has been completely changed. There's a new menu, there's a new login screen. It all looks completely different. So I understand why you guys were quite confused when I didn't mention anything about it. Um, also, it seems to be running a lot smoother right out of the box. There's no glitches with like the sky or anything like that. There's no glitches at all, actually. This is perfectly playable. Um, and considering that I'm both recording, casting to my PC for full screen recording, and recording the microphone all at the same time, this thing would run a lot smoother without me doing all of that. This is super, super impressive. And also, of course, if I turn down the render distance even further or installed some sort of performance mod, I'm sure that this would run a lot, lot nicer. Um, and I will have a tutorial out for you guys if you want about mods and stuff like that. But as you can see, the sky isn't glitched, anything like that. Everything is just looking absolutely fantastic and running absolutely fantastic. So, like, look at that. You are gonna absolutely destroy me for breaking this with a pickaxe, but I need an axe. Now we can have some charcoal. Because I chose survival, it's gonna be much, much more difficult to build a house real quick. The game works. It runs really nicely, really smoothly. And without me recording, it would probably be running even better. I love this part, the part that I can switch uh, through my inventory like this. It's, I always found that like very intuitive and I always really like that. So I'm glad they brought this back. There we go, torch, 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 and torch. Honestly, this is going to make me want to play more Minecraft because the fact that this is running so well, I think I might just start like uh, a new series on a second channel where we go out on adventures on this thing. But it's a cave, yeah, no, we probably don't want that to be there. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, I am super impressed with the way this is working. I mean, the Questcraft team did an absolutely fantastic job with the way this all works. It, it Seriously, it makes me want to jump into the game more. So I am super, super happy with that. My camera did die, so we're using my phone camera. I know, it's a little bit different. But uh, yeah, there you guys go. It's all working, completely standalone. On the Quest, this is not connected to any PC or anything like that. This is all entirely standalone, and I'm recording at the same time. So of course, performance is going to drop. But yeah, I'm super impressed, and props to the Questcraft team. You guys did an amazing job. Everything is revamped. Seriously, let's jump to the outro. So that is going to be it for today's video, guys. I am so happy to finally be able to bring this to you. You guys have been asking me since forever in the comment section if I know a fix for Questcraft or what's happening. It's been updated. Your menu looks different and things like that. So I hope that this video could help you out. The install is literally now easier than ever. We don't need to stretch it out. And I hope that this video helps out more people hop into Minecraft standalone on their quest. You don't need a powerful PC or anything like that to power this. It all runs on the quest itself, which is still incredible if you ask me. Full Minecraft Java on the quest itself and running Vivecraft, and they've now got partial sodium support? That is incredible. Like seriously, they have added so much. That being said, this is still a beta version, so bugs and issues will be encountered. But if you have any issues, check out their Discord 
down below. But yeah, that's going to be it. If you guys like this one, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too. But let me know why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord down below and check out our Reddit, where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. And thank you so much to the patrons. You guys seriously help me out a ton, paying my bills, paying my subscriptions, and helping me make these videos better and better. Last video I uploaded was my Pico 4 review, and honestly, I am so happy with the way that turned out, except for my yellow ink quest, which I can't do anything about, unfortunately. But yeah, that's going to be it. And if you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.